In this video, we're going to do a step-by-step -step build of this circuit. And what this circuit does is we take a voltage coming in and the resistance right here, which is a 1 kilo ohm resistor. And basically, if we have 1 volt coming in, we will have 1 milliamp of current for the load. Because 1 volt divided by 1 kilo ohm, 1,000 ohms, is one milliamp, one thousandth of an amp. If we go to two volts, then since we'll have the same resistor here of one kilo ohm, we'll have two milliamps. So in any case, let us get to the build. So first off, we have this trim pot to give us a fraction or all the way to zero volts or all the way up to the power source voltage. So all it's doing is setting a voltage to this PNP transistor and uh, the power source voltage doesn't really matter it just sets our upper limit for voltages so we're going to use a 2N3906 PNP transistor and uh, I got one right here the numbers won't show up but looking at the flat side like this the left pin is the emitter that's where the arrow is middle pin is the base and the right pin is the collector and any bipolar junction transistor that starts with 2N should have that same pin layout. So emitter is going to be on top there. Now the output of the trim pot, I have a jumper right there, comes up to here. So that will go to the middle pin. The collector, so the right pin, will be going to the negative rail, our ground, our zero volt reference point. So I'm going to have the flat side facing to the left and I will make that connection right there. So you can see that uh, the trim pot goes to the middle pin, the base, and the collector down here goes to ground. You can see the flat side is to the left. And then the emitter is up here to where this jumper is. We will come to that in a bit. So now the uh, voltage there when it's below the power source voltage will get current flowing through here so we're going to need a 10 kilo ohm resistor to limit the current and uh, I don't think exact value matters too much I didn't really look at any effect different values would have but in any case we're going to put a 10 kilo ohm resistor to the emitter on uh, top there and so that is going to set a voltage plus 0.6 volts. So the voltage at this point when we have a load, I found without a load with that wide open, I got a different voltage. But for most loads, we should have whatever the voltage is there plus 0.6 volts, which we expect because there's a base to emitter drop. And since this is a PNP transistor, the voltage is actually slightly higher than what we input instead of slightly lower for the NPN. So that brings us to the NPN transistor and I'm going to use the 2N3904 right here and uh, the part number won't show up on camera though without a magnifier loop or a magnifier glass but again we have emitter to the left base in the middle and collector to the right so we want the emitter down so now we're going to turn it this way and the flat side will be to the right but now emitter is towards the bottom there and we're going to connect that to ground with a resistor and uh, so for now the only permanent thing on the board so far or thing that's placed there is that jumper which will go to the middle pin so we'll use that for placement to set it right there these trim pots kind of get squeezed out of the board and uh, it pushes them out over time so you want to push them back down probably best not to push on this though the uh, resistive path is kind of getting worn I think from me pushing there so much so in any case we're going to use a 1 kilo ohm resistor and again this is to set the current you take the voltage and uh, the resistance that you have here and that is the current that you will get across the load a uh, steady current so we're going to use a 1 kilo ohm resistor to make the math easy. And uh, that goes to the negative rail right there. So 
we are pretty much done. The load can be pretty much anything. I'm going to use LEDs, but first let's connect our power supply. I'm going to use a 10 volt power supply. As you can see here, we have a jumper going from the red rail to the red rail, and also a jumper going from the black rail to the black rail. So, I have alligator clips coming from my bench power supply. I can go up to 18 volts. I have it set to 10 volts right now. And I will plug it into the positive rail, which I just mentioned also powers that rail. And then, same thing, I have an alligator clip to this alligator clip that I crimped these onto just uh, breadboard wires and uh, we'll put that to the negative rail so really we are done I can get the uh, multimeter and we don't even need a load and uh, first thing I'm gonna do is turn on the uh, meter and we will go to a uh, voltage so there we go much better so we're gonna go to voltage and see what the voltage of the trim pot is right now and of course if you use a different voltage power supply it will uh, kinda shift so that is a little high and because we're using 10 volts we should stay at least a few volts with uh, 10 volts down when you're at 5 volts I think you can go up to a 3 volts with a 5 volt power supply but let's go let's go to uh, lost a connection somewhere let's try to get this to 5 volts and usually I can hold on to this better than this it's kind of embarrassing alright let's give her another try there we go so 6.56 .56 volts let's go down to 5 volts and uh, in fact let's go to 1 volt because we can go really low with the voltage and this will still work so about 1 volt and so again whatever voltage we put here so 1 volt divided by 1000 ohms of resistance we can expect 1 milliamp of uh, current so even with no load so put the uh, screwdriver down and I'll put the red probe up here so current's gonna flow through the meter from one probe to the other and that's how it's gonna get its current reading and there you can see one milliamp of current now I'm going to add an LED so the LED will be in series with the uh, transistor there and again, one milliamp, and it's spot on, which is really nice. And the LED is not very bright because it's only one milliamp of current. And again, we will add another LED in series if it will go into the breadboard. So, all right, I'll slide it up here. And uh, if it doesn't like one particular spot, just uh, slide it over, and it will usually go in. Again, one milliamp, and we will even add a resistor. I can put it up here because we're going to complete the path through the meter and one milliamp of current so now with the 10 volt power supply and uh, two LEDs I'm probably not going to get up to about eight milliamps because that's dissipating a lot of power so let's see what what voltage we are at so there is limitations but uh, 9.33 so I'm just gonna kinda quickly do this there you go 7.14 let's see if it's still holding true with that much and uh, I think I'll just do another video with a lot more multimeter measurements there you go milliamp so you can see it is down quite a bit I think that though is because of two LEDs and I think they're just blocking too much voltage and throwing things off so you, there you can see 7.06 we'll just skip the LED and the current is holding pretty steady there we can even skip the resistor and it's holding really steady there so there are limits based on the load that you got but there is quite a bit of flexibility too 
So, in any case, hopefully you like this. The uh, point of the circuit is that usually when you're using a bipolar junction transistor, you have a 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volt difference from your input based on the base 2 emitter drop. And this circuit helps you eliminate that if you want to accurately transfer the voltage, in this case to a resistor, to set the current for a load as a current source. 